not to sound vain, but out of all of the amazing things and accomplishments I can think of, her most important one was being my mother. <laughs> Even with her busy schedule, running a company, and practically changing the world, not once has my mother failed to be there for me. Every ballet performance, every middle school choir show, every time I cried because I was having a bad day, every dance I made up and performed in the living room, I mean, literally everything. She also has millions of pictures to prove it. Like, I'm surprised the pictures haven't taken up all of internet space. But she truly is a caring, loving, and considerate mother. Honestly, I could list every positive adjective we have in the English language, and she would not fail to embody each and every one. I know she will always have my back. Thank you, Mom. So it was with my great pride and appreciation to present this award to my mom, Kelly Vlahakis Hanks. Give a big round of applause <laughs> to Kelly. Congratulations. Oh. You made me even teary. <laughs> thank you. Alexia, I just want to say thank you so very much for that beautiful introduction. I love you. And I'm really just so inspired by her. I mean, at 15 years old, to stand up in front of 300 people, and she's just fearless and brave and has so much confidence. And I love you, and I'm so proud of you. Thank you. The greatest honor of my life is being your mother. Aww. When we were preparing for this interview, you said we were about to honor Kelly, and she says, I have to honor my daughter. Look what she's done. And that is real success, is it not? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations on this really well-earned award. Ecos is changing the world. Yes, it's a family-owned business, but you took it to new heights and have penetrated the marketplace and beyond. So congratulations. Tell us where Ecos is today Thank and what you. you're most proud of. Thank you. Well, I'm really just so proud to sit at the helm of a woman-owned, woman-operated company that is really socially and environmentally responsible. And I really want to show that business can champion change. There's no reason that you can't do well and do good. And we have to really change that model. <laughs> and so as we stand here today, you know, we've taken stands on many things. Took a stand on a fair living wage for all. Took our minimum wage to $17 an hour. Unbelievable. That's how it happens. That's why you have to be in the room where it happens. Yes, and we also, you know, we manufacture all of our products in facilities that are carbon neutral, they're water neutral, and they're platinum zero waste. So Kelly, that is called the trifecta. And why is that so significant? How many companies are doing that? And are you at the forefront of that? Well, we actually, it's an unprecedented trifecta. So we're the first manufacturer in the world to have achieved zero waste, carbon neutrality, and water neutrality. But I expect many more to follow suit because it's the right thing to do for our planet. And it's also the right thing to do for the bottom line. We have to start really thinking about creating long-term value for all and not just short-term profits. You also have an incredible benefits and financial investment package for your employees. Why is that so important? Because without our team, we would never be here today. And I think we have to really learn how to value the inputs of each and every single member of the team. And that's something that I think women truly bring to the table, the collaboration, the team building, and really the insightfulness and in understanding the needs of the team members. If you don't take care of your employees and you don't take care of your team, they're not going to take care of you either. And so I think it's, you know, very, very important when we're talking about paid maternity and paid paternity. You know, everyone, when we took our wage to $17 an hour, people said, oh, what it's going to do to the bottom line. But people don't think about all of the transactional costs that hit their bottom line when they don't retain employees, when they don't have employees that are really committed to the mission and to the vision of our company. 
Would you say this is what is the advantage of being a woman CEO at the helm? Because were there voices pushing back on you saying, no, this doesn't make economic sense, this is not how it's done? Did you feel like you had to pioneer this forward because you knew it was the right thing to do? I absolutely do think it's one of the advantages. I think looking at the collective whole, looking at the good for all, is one of the unique things that we most certainly bring to the table. I think also um, really looking to have diverse teams at the table. I have an amazing group of talented women that are here with me in the room today. You know, my general counsel, 100% of our legal team is comprised of women. That was our, a conscious effort. Well, it was, you know, it was an effort to really select the most qualified candidates for each of the positions. So whether it was you know, my VP of innovation or VP of sustainability or my VP of marketing. I mean, I have just a wonderful group of women leading the company alongside of me. And I'm proud to have a really diverse team because with a diverse team, you can really serve a diverse customer base as well. And if you don't have everyone's voice at the table, you really cannot understand what your consumers need. It is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. And yet, so many reports say people don't recycle as they should. They're still using toxic products and toxic makeup and products developed by men. What is it going to take? You're at the forefront of this industry and this revolution. What is it going to take for us to stop and say, we got to move the needle and get involved off the sidelines? Absolutely. It's going to take a lot of education. I mean, that's what I love about the museum, the focus on education and inspiration. The same thing is happening to us in the environmental space. I'm so thrilled we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. But if you can imagine it, in 1970, when Earth Day was created, there were about 83,000 chemicals that had not been tested for human and health safety that were grandfathered in. 50 years later, most of these products and ingredients are still in commerce. So each and every day, you're exposed to so many toxic ingredients that are harmful for human health and the health of our planet. And we need to change that because we need people to know what is in their products. One of the things that I'm really proud of California for doing is that this year, California became the first state in the nation to require ingredients to be disclosed in cleaning products. And knowledge is power. And now the consumer has the chance to look at that back label and to know, are there carcinogenic substances? Think about it. Your skin's the largest organ on your body. If you have things that are toxic on your clothes, it's being absorbed into your skin. If it's on your plates, your glasses, you put your water in your glass. We have to protect ourselves. But we must know that that is on us. There's nobody else who's going to do it. So you really need to be active, become politically involved at the federal level, at the local level. Make sure you're talking to your members of Congress about what you need. And it's, you know, it's exciting to see that when Earth Day started in 1970, 20 million people, Democrats and Republicans, students, workers, I mean, so many people united. Now, 50 years later, over a billion people in 193 countries will come together to celebrate our shared home. You are... A mom, you run a big company, it's surging in growth, you're paving new frontiers, and the way you lead a woman's leadership, you are your father's daughter, I understand. How Thank important you. was your father-daughter relationship in empowering you to take the reins of a major company like this? Absolutely. Thank you for that question. You know, I think it's so very important, so many of the things that I learned from him. And I also really value the fact that my father never looked at, are you a man? Are you a woman? What age are you? What race are you? He was always looking for the individual in the room who was giving the most, who cr contributed the most. And so although I was the youngest daughter and uh, certainly not maybe the likely successor, I really appreciated the fair playing field that existed in our workplace. And it's a fair playing field that we want to keep up and that I hope to see other family businesses doing the same thing. We need to change the model of, oh, just the oldest son or just this. It's really got to be the person who really is committed to taking the business forward. Regardless of gender. Regardless Put your hands of gender. Together for that. What are the women 
in our history and currently that you'd like to see in this museum displayed? Well, I would certainly love to see Rachel Carson. So um, probably many of you know her pivotal work back in 1962 with Silent Spring and the work that she did to show the dangers and pesticides. And a lot of that is really credited with sparking the modern environmental movement. And I want to make sure that those stories are told in the museum as well. There's so many women leading change in so many industries. And I, I just can't wait to take my daughter to the museum to see those stories and I can't wait for children all across our nation to come to the museum and see those stories. I remember the first time that I brought my daughter to the National Women's History Museum event. It was probably five or six years ago. And at that time, they told the story about unearthing the statue of the suffragettes that had been in a crypt since 1920 and getting it placed back into the Capitol in the rotunda and bringing the story to light. And that really kind of kicked off the impetus for the museum, really taking our stories out of the darkness, bringing our stories back into the light, and shining the spotlight on the accomplishments of so many women. And it really is something that gives all of us a lot of inspiration and strength. And uh, I'm excited for the day that we all get to be there together. In your leadership, in your leadership style, give a motto you live by. Well, I think it's the golden rule, just to treat others the way you want to be treated. I think if we can all really think of that in our everyday lives, and as we lead, I think it's really transformative. And just to keep that at top of mind. <laughs> and do you think we will have a healthier, more sustainable planet because of companies like yours, let's say in the next 50 years, will you see a very different future? I see a different future because of consumers like the ones in this room. So companies are gonna make the products that consumers will buy. And I would just encourage everyone here, vote with your dollars. Make sure, make sure when you go into the stores and you spend your money, that those brands really reflect the values that you hold dear as well. That will really change the needle and that will really change the way that business is run. And I'm also really inspired by my daughter's generation. I see women like her and so many others that are passionate and that are really leading our generation on what they need to have a safe and healthy planet to live on. If Maya Angelou were here and she is in spirit, she would say, you are a phenomenal woman. Thank you very much. Thank Kelly you. Kelly Blackus-Hanks. <laughs>